and some of her characteristics and all, and we're going to talk about those in just a few moments. It's a long ways uh, in time and distance from 1923 to now, uh, from Florida to Texas to right here in Waco, Texas. Uh, 98 years worth of, uh, of living and moving and, and forming a family and doing all the things that uh, she was involved in with her and her husband, uh, with uh, the things that uh, have occurred across the years. Uh, Margaret was a member of the First Christian Church. Uh, she was preceded in death by her husband, R.C. Henry, I believe it was in 1998, is that correct? 1998. And a great-grandson, Zachary Charles Jones. She is also preceded in death by siblings, uh, Elizabeth, Marion, Ida Mae, Grace, and Arthur. Uh, surviving today uh, uh, are her uh, daughter and son-in-law, Charlotte and Ron Jones of Belton, Texas. Uh, grandson Brad Jones and his wife Molly, and great grandchildren Mackie and Cameron. My grandson Blair Jones and his wife Carrie, and a great granddaughter Sydney Jones, who are halfway around the world. And, and if they're not watching now, they'll be able to view the video uh, later. We're so thankful for that technology and things that are being able to be done today. Uh, she's also survived by uh, uh, two sisters, Beatrice of uh, uh, Oregon and, and Juanice of, uh, of Austin. And that's just a synopsis, a very small synopsis of uh, the beginning and the end and uh, some of the little things in between. We're going to be doing several things today and one of the things we're going to be doing, uh, one of her uh, grandsons, Brad, is going to be sharing some information from his viewpoint and also from uh, uh, information uh, that he received from Blair uh, that he's going to be sharing also. I'm going to say my piece first, and I'll read uh, what Blair sent me the other day uh, as well. So, when thinking about uh, Grandma, you know, the, the, the first word that came to my mind was fortunate. Uh, I, I was fortunate to have a wonderful grandmother for 48 years, uh, for Blair for 44 years, and that's something that a lot of people do not have. Uh, you know, for my youngest memories, uh, grandma was always there. We grew up around her. Uh, we lived, you know, we lived around them. Uh, when we moved to China Spring, they were here in Waco, and we were, we were around grandpa and grandpa, grandpa and grandma all the time. I mean, they were a big, huge part of our lives each and every day. Um, you know, my, some of my fondest memories were we were little going to the trailer lot. <laughs> we go to the trailer lot for. Uh, I don't even know why we were there, but I know mom and dad needed us to be there for some reason, and we were there, and we loved being down there with them, playing in the trailers and climbing on the trucks and just doing all these sorts of little boy things, and I think that one thing I always say about grandma was this, was she was there, and we knew she was there, but and I, it's one of those things we felt like we had freedom, but we knew that she was there watching over us, if that makes sense, if that makes sense. So, that's kind of how I felt, you know, we were in the trailer lot, and then later on when she would come out and watch us during the summertime after the baseball bat incident with Blair, uh, Grandma came out and started watching us. And so that was, a, you know, that was something that during the summertime she was always out there. We were going and doing everything in the world, but she was there at home, and we always knew that she was there. We'd come in and check in every once in a while. And have lunch or something like that. We were out going again, but she was there, and she—that was—that was, you know, that was her. I mean, she was always there for us. I mean, she was there. Some of the fondest memories, also for me, are when she would uh, she'd give us haircuts. You know, that was something that we would go. Mom would 
take us over there and she would give me a player haircut. And that was something that I wish I could get a free haircut today. <laughs> and I got one another day and it was not cheap. Uh, so, but, you know, things like that. I mean, I'm, you know, those, there's so many memories. I was just trying to write down just a few things. I was kind of overwhelmed by it, but those are some of the memories. Another kind of funny memory also is this. She liked to sew. And I'm sure y'all are familiar with that. And she sewed stuff for us. And some of you will remember this. When I was in high school, and this was the 80s, and the big thing that was popular back then was jams shorts. Okay? And those were those really ridiculous flowery shorts. <laughs> well, jams were like super expensive back then. And so we couldn't afford jams. So Grandma made me these flowery shorts. And she bought, we bought the material and she made shorts for me. And I think now they're actually a blanket, I believe, in our house. Uh, you know, she took them and made a blanket later on. You know, it's, it's things like that. Some other memories. And this is kind of a grandpa and grandma memory, but I gotta say this. One of my favorite ice creams is pralines and cream. And the reason why that is is because grandma and grandpa when we go over there, they had pralines and cream. They didn't have blueberry, bluebell pralines and cream. They had Baskin Robbins pralines and cream. And this was back before you would buy it in the cartons. And they would go get the tub and they would cut it. It fascinated me because I was little. And you'd have this big giant half of a tub in the freezer to get ice cream. I mean, you know, it's my favorite. And you ask me, it's my favorite ice cream to this day. Uh, and, uh, you know, and then probably the thing that she, we enjoyed with my family was making peach ice cream, her famous peach ice cream. And that's something that she enjoyed even showing my kids how to do. And that was a memory that they all had, making peach ice cream, homemade peach ice cream. That's a, you know, it's a very, something that we look forward to all the time when we make it. So, you know, there's, and there's, there's many more, um, you know, memories. She was always, she was always giving. I was trying to remember, I don't think I ever remember a time when grandma asked anything. It was always, what do you need? What can I do for you? How are you? It was always about you. She was an awesome listener. I mean, with me, with Molly, with my kids, always there and could always listen. Um, she didn't say a lot. She was very quiet but when she spoke listened, you knew it was going to be something that you needed to listen to. And so that was something that also, that I, um, that I, you know, I remember. I mean, it was just, she was always there and just a huge part of our lives. Uh, some more specific things a little bit with my family personally that I can say is uh, for Molly, one of the things that she, she taught Molly how to do was sew. So after um, we were married, Molly kind of got interested in sewing, she taught Molly how to sew. Another memory that I have for, um, Mackie was, and it actually you see it on the picture on the blanket up there with Sydney. She would always comb and brush Mackie's hair every time we were around, and that's a memory that I know Mackie will always have the rest of her life. She'll remember that. And with Cameron, it was going and sitting in there in the front room at mom and dad's house when we were visiting, and he'd go in there and watch TV with her. And sometimes I don't know if they'd really say much. But it was just time with her watching TV. I think he said Judge Judy was what they were watching. <laughs> I don't know. They were just having that moment together. And so, you know, she, it was a huge, she was a huge influence on in our lives. Um, we will we will greatly, greatly miss her. We were fortunate enough to go and have one last vacation, a little time with her this summer. We took the kids to Jellystone and got to be with her at Jellystone. And I know that we will always. Cheer. We will always cherish that. Always cherish that. Um, all right, let me read what Blair had to say, and his is kind of very, kind of obviously very similar to me. Uh, okay, it says uh, Margaret Henry was a, more than a grandmother; she was my grandma. Grandma was a second mother to Brad and I all our lives. Grandma was a babysitter, chauffeur, cook, barber. Seamstress, playmate, TV watching companion, school tutor, lifeguard, although not a great one because she didn't know how to swim, uh, and so much more. Grandma would stay with me and Brad during the summer in China Spring when we were out of school. She would cook our meals and make ice cream cones. I would insist that it had to look 
like the picture on the box. <laughs> My most fond memories of Grandma came from these summers when, we, when she would take care of us, taking us to tennis lessons at Sol Ross Tennis Center, taking us to the movies. We made her take us to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom at the theater, and she just about lost it <laughs> during many of the scenes of that movie. Grandma never complained and would do her best to accommodate all of our many requests. Grandma was a remarkable woman, the toughest woman I'd ever known. She did not have sympathy for her she did not have sympathy for complaining and could uh, outwork just about anyone for most of her life. I never heard her once complain about anything ever. I would mow their grass and pressure wash their house and when they li lived in Woodway, if I would start to complain about being tired or about the heat, I would be swift swiftly met with Oh, you poor baby, get back to work, you missed a spot. <laughs> now as I'm older, the things that stand out most to me about Grandma was that she never talked about herself and was the best listener I've ever met. Grandma always wanted to know what was going on in our lives. Grandma always struck me as the most content person, grateful for what she had, and never wanted anyone anything more. If I had to sum up my grandma in two words, she was a woman of selfless service. I love her with all my heart, Blair. And that's, that's how I feel too. I mean, it was it was something after reading his email. It was you know it's, those things struck me, and like I said, there's many many more things that I could talk about and stuff. But you know that I think that's just a true sign of a great woman when she has such an impact on my life. On my children's lives, my wife, and everyone, everyone here, one way or another. I appreciate that. I love you. said, well, that may be true partially, but said, uh, I do something my mama never did. Said, I lose my temper every once in a while. <laughs> she went ahead to describe her mother as a, as a woman who loved her family very much, an excellent hairdresser, wonderful seamstress, enjoyed reading, enjoyed working on jigsaw puzzles, working on the jumble in the newspaper, liked to play games on her phone and Kindle, liked to garden when she was able, loved to go. Love to go. Ron and Charlotte told me uh, that uh, 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 later they sold their, their camper and uh, uh, bought a motor home uh, for the uh, purpose of being able to take her on trips with her. And she said, uh, uh, they said uh, uh, the last trip I guess they took together was uh, uh, they loaded her up, she was in her wheelchair, she strapped herself in, and she enjoyed the whole trip, going and coming. Uh, she loved to go. Self-motivated, a positive person, enjoyed playing games with family, enjoyed helping my daddy with his woodworking projects, liked to do crafts and some painting, creative, a good cook. My impression of uh, Charlotte's mother, Margaret, is that uh, she was one of the most uh, humble, modest person of good taste that I've probably ever met in my life. 
uh, just the way that she spoke, just the way that she conducted herself, just the way that she dressed, just the way that she visited with people uh, uh, and all. We were in Ron and Charlotte's house several times uh, over the uh, last uh, several years uh, at, uh, at Melton and she was there and been able to visit with her at the same time and all. So uh, we, were, we were thankful for that association. I have three things that I want to share uh, uh, as we close our, our service today. Uh, I was thinking about this last night. I was thinking about it early this morning. I finally wrote it down about uh, 9.30 this morning. There are three things I want to uh, stress today. This is not so much uh, about her as it is about us, okay? Uh, you know who she was, you know what she was about. You, uh, you have a, a relationship with her and it's all well and good. The preacher part of me says I need to speak to those of us in her life. And so here, it, here are three things I want to impress upon each and every one of us. Number one, uh, from Acts chapter 9 and verse 39, we have the widow lady who died there. Uh, uh, Peter finally came and uh, uh, the rest of the widows and folks were, were crying because of her absence and all and they began to show uh, Peter the things that she had made the things that she had made, the things that she had left behind that's important from this viewpoint and Brad touched up on it and Blair did also the memories that you create in life are memories that will live on and if you're not if you're not creating a memory book right now, you need to start creating a memory book. I'm not necessarily talking about a scrapbook where you write all these things down, but it's a part of your, your mind, a, a part of your remembrances, if you will. You write them down, that's well and good. But she made an impact upon this family, and you're making an impact upon someone too. If the memories are there, they will be fondly recalled from time to time, and, uh, and you'll be remembered by your descendants as time rolls by. The second thing is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, our trouble which we face, which is but for a moment, is working for us a form of exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but to the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. My admonition is to keep your focus upon the things that are important. The things that you have in this life that you call your own will belong to somebody else one of these days. Uh, I've often remarked uh, uh, to my children, I said, see all these things around the house in the garage and that shed out back? You'll get to sell them at a garage sale one of these days if there's not anything that you want to keep. See, focus on the things that are, that are important. Focus upon not the temporal, but upon the eternal. And if you do that, you will be doing a great service to yourself and to your family and to your descendants. The uh, third and the last thing is found in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so, so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Run with endurance the race that is set before us. Back in my younger days, a long, long time ago, I, I ran... Uh, uh, 5Ks, 10Ks, those kinds of things. I have a granddaughter that does uh, 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 triathlons and all. I don't know where she gets that from, but she's got it uh, and all. But a lot of times we think of life as a sprint, but uh, 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 life is a, is a long distance race. And we're not competing with each other at all. It's just a race that we must run, let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us. 98 years is a long time. You talk about somebody outliving their peer group, Margaret has practically outlived her peer group. Uh, there are those of us that remember her, but we're certainly not within that peer group uh, uh, at all. The next verse says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. 
the word is steadfast. Be steadfast in your life. Be steadfast in the race of your life. Keep your uh, 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 memories going and alive. Keep your focus where it needs to be and be steadfast as you run the race of life. You're not competing with anybody else. It's just, it's just your race. It's your journey from beginning to end. Hers was a very long journey from uh, uh, Florida to Waco to eternity. Ours may be a little bit shorter than that. Some of, them, some of us may be a little bit longer than that. I don't know, and you don't know either. But create those memories, keep your focus where it needs to be, and be steadfast in that race. I'm, I'm thankful for new technology today. Uh, at the uh, funeral home, there it is. At the funeral home, uh, in the registration book there, there was a poem. I, I photographed it, and I want to read it to you. It talks about the title of it is Lasting Impression. A legacy enduring beyond life's final breath, impressed forever upon our hearts, undisturbed by death. Unchanged at final passing, the giver, only fingerprints left on our lives when the journey here is done. This touch will linger always, etched in memories, the impression carried with us as we reach eternity. That's a fitting conclusion to what Brad and his brother had to say, of what I've tried to say today. So let's have a closing prayer. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for, for life itself. Father, we're so thankful for those that have gone on before us and have provided uh, instruction for us and provided safety for us. Has, uh, has allowed us to, to grow and mature, uh, has uh, allowed us to have memories that are created as life went on. Now, Father, we're thankful for the life and the influence of, uh, of, of Margaret. We pray your blessings upon the family of Ron and Charlotte and, uh, and Brad and Blair and their families. Uh, we pray that they can carry on that tradition of uh, exhibiting those qualities that she's exhibited in her life of creating those memories that can uh, be carried on, of making an impression upon each and every one of us. Be with us, Father, as we leave this place. We pray, Father, that, uh, that our focus can be where it needs to be. Father, we pray that we can continue living the life that we need to live and that we can be steadfast in that life. And Father, we just pray that uh, as we approach this time in our life, not knowing when it will be, we'll always be ready for that time. Thank you for loving us through Jesus Christ. Thank you for friends across the years. Thank you for life in Christ Jesus, which makes life bearable and death bearable also. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like the faith pastor, Christy, for such beautiful words of inspiration this afternoon, I'd like to say thank you to the pallbearers for your final act of kindness in bringing Miss Henry Terracana resting place. I'd like to say thank you to the friends and family that traveled from near and far to be here today. But of course, I certainly want to say thank you, family, for trusting us with your precious loved one. I'd like you to know that Earth has no pains or sorrows that heaven can't heal. You'll find at a time like this, you need to know that there's someone who truly cares. Of course, I speak of none other than our Heavenly Father, who is able to come from these sunny skies and always wipe the tears from your eyes. In addition, I'd like to go on to say that on behalf of Hatch Bailey and the entire Wilkerson Hatch Bailey professional staff, thank you so much for your trust. Thank you for the privilege to serve your family. We certainly do not take that for granted. I ask that God would impart his traveling grace on all of you as you return home. And to begin on behalf of Hatch Bailey and the entire Wilkerson Hatch Bailey professional staff, may God bless you and may he keep you. This is going to conclude today's celebration for the beautiful Miss Margaret Henry. Please let us go in the peace and love of God, and we are dismissed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. You did, you did, you did good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't have anything up there to protect it.